Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to talk about the basics of control panels. Now this is based off your feedback on our very popular introduction to control panel video that has hundreds of thousands of views. But despite my arguments, no one wanted to get rid of the introduction. So let's go ahead and roll that introduction footage. And someone recently asked if we could make a video on control panels that wasn't so boring. No, but maybe we can make one that sucks a little less. Oh, that beard. What was I thinking? So this is your basic control panel. Now already I can hear somebody saying, well, Tim, couldn't you find a bigger control panel? Well, yeah, I could have, but I couldn't have gotten it where we could look this close at it. And really, this has all the parts of your typical control panel, but it's not so ginormous that it's overwhelming. But on the front of it, we have an HMI, we have a disconnect to disconnect our power, and then we have some handoff auto switches and an alarm light, silence, and alarm buzzer. Now we're gonna break this panel down into a lot of its functionality in future videos. But for this one, we really want to go over the basics. This is our disconnect switch, which is tied to our breaker through this through the shaft disconnect. Now, so there's probably somebody who's going to say, well, you can never get those lined up. Well, yeah, you can. I've got a video down in the description. We'll show you exactly how. But so our incoming power comes in the top of the breaker and it comes out of the bottom. And with these diagrams, we can trace them to these three motor starters and this power supply. Now each one of our motor starters has overload protection on it right here. And that little dial right there, you can turn to whatever the full load amps is of your motor. And also along with being an overload, it acts as an individual disconnect for each motor. And you can pull that out and you actually can put a little lockout on each one of them. After your motor protection, it goes down to these contactors, which when you energize, will pull in and then they drop back out. And that is what actually sends power to your motors. So the other thing on our main power distribution was the 24 volt power supply. Now in our previous video, we were using a transformer and our transformers are not as cool as the one of the movies, but they're still very important and very cool because they will take one voltage and convert it to another voltage. So in the case of this panel that we were doing last time, we were converting 480 volt to 120 volt. And you don't always have to do that though. I see a lot of panels that are good from 480 to 120 and all that 120 does is actually power a power supply. Well, this power supply right here can go from 240 directly to 24 volt DC. They also make them that'll go from 480 directly to 24 volt DC. So in these cases, we didn't need the 120 that our transformer would provide. So we just have the power supply. Now after that, we have our PLC, and that is what you could consider the brains of the operation. So it takes inputs from our field, which would be like our limit switches, say our flow meters, tank levels, anything that you think of as something it reads, and it interprets that and then it uses that to control its outputs. And we have tons of lessons on PLCs. So look down in the description, you'll see all of those. This is called wire duct, and it is used to hide all of our wires, or some people would say our messes, but pretty much every panel, I'll say that has more than 10 wires in it, should have wire duct in it. So looking closer here, we have these terminal blocks, and this is where we're actually landing all of our field wiring. So we have these terminal block jumpers, and they actually make every other one of these common. Here's all the inputs. And actually, we have a couple isolated outputs on this one. Also, the green terminal blocks you see are grounds, and typically they will be bonded to this DIN rail. Now, grounding is very important in industrial control panels. Actually, grounding is very important in commercial control panels, or, or actually even in residential control panels. Uh, so pretty much if you see something that's labeled ground, it needs to get to a ground spot. And if you're not sure if it should go to ground, put it there anyway, because grounding is important. Also, I mentioned that these grounds bonded to this DIN rail. Now, DIN rail is an acronym that stands for something that if you were in a real class, it would actually tell you what it is. But I can tell you it's German and we use it to mount everything in control panels. Also, looking closer at these wires, you'll notice that every single wire in a panel should be labeled and yeah I have added this wire 
and I didn't put a label on it. So shame on me, but every single wire in your panel should be labeled. Now a question I do get a lot is, is it really required that you label wires in a panel? Well, it isn't necessarily required. Now this is using the terms very loosely. I'm not quoting UL here, but if you can trace a wire from one end all the way to the other end without it entering or exiting something such as wire duct, then you don't have to label it. So if we had a wire from here to here, then we wouldn't have to label it. But once it enters this wire duct, yes, that needs labeled. Now, again, my kind of general rule is if you have more than 10 wires in a panel, please put labels on them because later on, somebody's going to have to figure this out. And if it's more than 10 wires, then chances are it needs labeled. All right, moving on, we talked about, we have a PLC, we have an HMI. How do they talk to each other? Well, with an ethernet switch. And this is not much different than an ethernet switch that you would have in your house. Pretty much it has ethernet ports on it and it allows us to communicate between devices. It also allows us to get up into the cloud and all those fun things. And we'll probably have some videos coming up on the internet of things. Also something that I see often left out of panels is a nameplate. And this should be somewhere on the outside of the panel that no one has to open up anything to figure out what's going on. And really it should tell them one, what is the serial number? How do you identify this panel if you're calling the company? Also, it should have your company info on it. Uh, this is 230 volts, 60 hertz. The maximum current's 12 amps. The largest motor, four amps. It has its short circuit rating right here, which is five kiloamps. The drawing number and the enclosure type. And that is all very important information that you should be able to find without opening the panel. So a few things on that nameplate. We have the short circuit current rating. We're gonna do a whole set of videos on how to calculate that because it's not nearly as complicated as some people make it out to be. Also, there are some things you can do to easily raise your short circuit current rating if you have to. There's also a lot of myths out there that like right now, I think this is a 60 kiloamp circuit breaker and people will say, well, this is a 60 kiloamp panel. Well, no, it's not because this is a five kiloamp contactor and it is pretty much the weakest link. So we're going to have a whole video series on that. Also, it said that it is a UL 4X enclosure. Now this is a NEMA 4X enclosure. Now, if you go and blow a hole and put a Romex connector in the bottom of this thing or through the front of it, it is no longer a NEMA 4X panel. So we are going to go through that and talk about environmental ratings. One final thing that you should be looking for if you're purchasing a panel is every panel in the United States should have a UL listing number. Now this is not this UL listed mark. So this is the listing for this enclosure. And it tells us mainly that it has a type rating of 133S, 4X, 12, 13, and IP66. The label you should be looking for is this one. And this says that this is a UL listed enclosed industrial control panel. And it'll have a unique number on it. And what that means is the manufacturer, in this case me, of this panel, has been inspected by UL and has been deemed to build panels to their specification. And also in my case, I'm inspected quarterly to make sure that I am continuing to meet their standard. Now, if you don't see the sticker on a panel, then you should really evaluate whether it is safe to install in your facility. Because I'm not saying that people that don't label are shortcutting, but I'm saying that if they're not labeling, then there's a chance they're shortcutting. Also, OSHA requires that it be labeled and most state inspectors, they're gonna be looking for this. So if you end up in a situation where either you have a local inspector or OSHA around and they open the panel up, that's what they're gonna be looking for. And really, if they see that, they move on. If they don't see that, then they're gonna start nitpicking things.